Hi everyone, in this video, I share with you details on how to stock pick like the experts. And this is how star fund managers pick their stocks for their fund portfolios using quantitative valuation metrics, which you can start using today to pick the best stocks for your portfolio. So if you've heard of star fund managers such as Mark Slater, Tom Slater, James Anderson, Bill Ackman, Catherine Wood, Terry Smith, and many more, and are wondering how and why they are so successful, then this is your chance to begin picking stocks like them as I share with you a few ways they use as a first step to identify stock winners and champions for their portfolios. When I started investing many years ago, I didn't know where to go to find good stocks to buy or what to look for, or even where to find the relevant information. So in the coming minutes, I'm going to explain to you three choices of quantitative metrics these fund managers use to pick their stocks going through each step by step with examples so it is easy to understand to a layman or to a beginner to investing. And most importantly, where you can access the information from, the rationale on why these metrics are important and why these fund managers prefer to use this approach to select their stocks. This information is something I wish I had known at the beginning when I started my own investment journey as it would have now transformed my portfolio returns quite significantly beyond its current position. So at the end of this video, you'll be more equipped and more aware on how to pick stocks like the star expert fund managers and have the flexibility to create your own actively managed fund that can beat the market without any fees. So please stay with me to the end for the full analysis because you'll be getting insights which could dramatically change your approach to stock picking. And I can't wait to share this with you. So please stay with me. <music> subscribers and thank you so much for joining me here today. I'm Cornelius from Content Investing. My channel is about education, guidance on how to be successful and to make money from investing in the stock market. Here I share with you content on tutorials for beginners, share tips, thematic investment, funds, ETFs, latest market insights and loads more to help you grow your wealth in the stock market over the long term. I upload videos twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturdays so please subscribe to my channel by hitting the like and subscribe button below to become part of the family and enjoy the content, which is really good and helps grow the channel. And also make sure you hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded so you have the first chance to check them out and let me know what you think. There's always exciting stuff in there, new stuff which I highly recommend. So thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate you. There are two main approaches to stock picking which fund managers use. The first is quantitative approach, which is what we're talking about in this video today. And the second is qualitative analysis. Qualitative analysis focuses less on the numbers, but more on the qualities that make a company great. It takes into account the brand awareness, recurring revenue streams, operating model, management experience, and loads more. And the reason is to get a full valuation assessment of a company taking into account different measures of tangible financials, company-specific factors, and market outlook to assess which stock is going to be a winner or a blockbuster stock. So I share with you now three key valuation metrics which fund managers use to help guide your initial screening criteria and narrow down the universe of potential winners. So this would identify stocks which could qualify as a starting point for further qualitative research. So with that said, please smash that like button to turn it to blue and let's get straight into business with the first ratio, which is the PEG ratio. The PEG ratio is a valuation metric for determining the trade-off between the stock price, the earnings generated per share, and the company's expected growth rate. So it is the share price earnings ratio or the PE ratio divided by the earnings growth rate, which is calculated to give a full picture of the company's value taking into account its earnings growth rate. Growth is key here as this is what we as investors pay for, the expectation that a company will continue to grow its profits and earning so we grow our wealth too. So I know all that seems like gibberish and so complicated, but I'm going to scale back and take you through it step by step. So first, the PE ratio is the most popular metric used to value a share. So you will find it in most places showing company or share price fundamentals, whether it's Google Finance, Yahoo Finance, Tokopedia, your investment platforms or other sources. So you will see this any and everywhere. So this price to earnings ratio or PE ratio is the share price divided by its profit earnings per share. 
and the earnings per share here is the company's bottom line profit divided by the total number of outstanding shares issued which serves as an indicator of how the company's profitability is. So this PE ratio metric is used to show whether a company's stock price is either overvalued or undervalued. A high PE ratio, typically greater than 20, could mean that a company's stock is overvalued relative to others, or else that investors are expecting high growth rates in the future. So good and reasonable value shares are those with PE ratios below 20, though caution needs to be taken to avoid value traps. So in layman's terms, the price to earnings ratio indicates how much an investor is willing to pay per dollar or per pound of earnings. So if a company is currently trading at a PE ratio of say 20 times, it really means that an investor is willing to pay $20 for $1 of current earnings. So a high PE of say 100 means that investors are willing to pay $100 for $1 of earnings. So let's look at some examples of some really hot stocks out there which you're very familiar with, such as Apple, Tesla, and Amazon. You would see here that Apple has a PE ratio of 38, which you would think that's expensive, thinking $38 for $1 of earnings of Apple? Okay, maybe it's Apple and I'll buy that. But when you look at Amazon at 93 times, you're thinking this is even more expensive. But wait till you look at Tesla. Tesla has a PE of 1377, and that's super expensive which at this rate makes Apple look really cheap. And so this really means that investors are willing to pay $1,377 for $1 of earnings from Tesla, which may sound insane, but there is reasoning behind it, which is why the quantitative metric is on the one side of the stock selection criteria. So now we are clear about what PE ratio is. So by dividing this PE ratio by the earnings growth rate gives us the peg ratio which is better for comparing companies with different growth rates. So a peg ratio of one indicates that a stock is reasonably valued given the expected growth rate. So peg ratios between zero and one are indicative of high growth returns. So let's look at another example to bring this peg metric to life by choosing between two stocks from companies of the same industry. So for two companies, company say Y and company Z, company Y has a share price of $30 per share and earnings of $2 per share meaning a PE ratio of 15 times its earnings, while company Z has a share price of $54 per share and earnings of $3 per share, meaning a PE ratio of 18 times earnings. So if you simply look at the PE ratios, then company Y may seem like the more attractive option having a low PE. However, company Y has a projected five-year earnings growth rate of 12% per year, while company Z's earnings have a projected growth rate of 19% per year for the same period. So this gives a peg ratio of 1.25 for company Y and 0.95 for company Z, making it the more attractive option despite a high PE ratio without a full growth picture. So as you can see, the peg ratio represents a fuller and more relevant valuation measure than the standard PE ratio on its own, as it factors the growth into the equation. And factoring in future growth adds an important element to stock valuation since equity investments represent a financial interest in a company's future earnings. And this is important because growth is what we as investors pay for. And the PEG has the added advantage that it allows investors to be able to compare companies with different growth rates and PEs together. So in this case, the experts demand at least a double digit expected earnings growth rate to eliminate 95% of the universe of available investment, leaving a more manageable list of investments to scrutinize and to conduct further qualitative assessments on them. And what the fund managers are looking for here is companies which can grow substantially over the medium term, so they tend to remove cyclical companies and those with no history of consistent growth. At the same time, they don't want to overpay for growth, so their minimum criteria is to identify companies with a peg ratio of typical below one, which means that PE should always be below the expected growth rate. Some will not even pay more than a PE ratio of say 20 for a share. So a very, very disciplined approach to always ensure that they're getting the best value for growth. So the discipline here is key, which is what makes this fund manager so successful. Once the team have identified potentially good growth businesses, trading at attractive prices, only then do they begin to conduct further qualitative work with the goal to determine the reliability of that growth. One very important part of the qualitative work 
is to make a distinction between a very good growth company and an excellent one. So they tend to sell off a share if the PE of a very good growth company gets ahead of its sustainable growth rate and thereby increasing its peg ratio. So essentially, they stick to their peg valuation discipline of having growth rate always greater than the PE ratio. However, the fund managers who look to hold an excellent growth business forever, irrespective of value, as long as the growth credentials remain intact and greater than the PE ratio. This approach is important because keeping and running winners like this is key to delivering top-notch returns over the long term. Next up is free cash flow yield. Free cash flow yield is a financial ratio that compares the free cash flow per share a company is expected to earn against its market value per share. The free cash flow here is calculated as the total cash available to spend including capital expenditure so as not to penalize the company for investing in growth. And the ratio is calculated by taking the free cash flow per share divided by the current share price. And as with PEG, you can find it on most investment platforms and websites including the Financial Times which you can see here. The free cash flow yield will be a more accurate representation of investment returns. So the managers look for yields which are high relative to long-term interest rates and when compared with the free cash flow yields of other investment candidates. So the lower the ratio, the less attractive a company is or an investment is because it means that investors are putting in money into a company but not receiving a good return in exchange. A high free cash flow yield, on the other hand, means that a company is generating enough cash to easily satisfy its debt and other obligations, including dividend payouts. It also gives an idea of how financially capable a company is at having quick access to cash or how much cash would be available if the company had to be liquidated. And so in general, yields of above 4% will tend to be acceptable for future research, but yields above 7% will be considered a higher ranking stock. So now I'm going to turn it over to you. How do you go about picking your stocks for your current portfolio? Do you use any of the metrics discussed so far? Please let me know in the comment section below. And also, if you're finding value or enjoying the content, please do me a favor to hit the like button and share with others from your network who could benefit from it. Or if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer and respond to you. Thank you so much. Our third metric is the growth intrinsic value. Some managers believe that the most important factor in delivering investment success is to focus on the growth in its intrinsic value as well as capital return to investors via dividends. The best metrics for capturing intrinsic value are earnings per share and free cash flow which we have just spoken about earlier. Focusing on intrinsic value is considered more predictable and preferable than relying on the quick fix of multiples such as PE ratio which goes up and down irrespective of the earnings or cash flow. So essentially, the fund managers look for businesses with strong market positions and competitive advantages which can grow their intrinsic value sustainably at between 8 to 12% a year. And the idea here is that over the long term, the share prices will follow the earnings. So their patience and value discipline is also expected to pay off. So here, high quality businesses with sustainable growth prospects are the key focus for the fund manager when conducting fundamental research. And these companies are characterized by higher than average returns on capital employed and consistent rather than explosive growth. So fellow investors, here you go with three approaches which the fund managers use, which you can start applying today to improve your approach to stock picking. Also remember to do some qualitative research to get a full picture of the stocks. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit the like button below and share it. Or if you're new, please ensure to subscribe right here by hitting the subscription button and also hit the buzzer to be notified when I upload new videos. You can also check out my other videos by clicking this playlist here or this other video here to learn from similar videos. Thank you so much for being here and I look forward to having you in my next video. Thank you so much. I appreciate that.